see if it works. All right, is this it? Are we on Facebook? We should be live now, it says we are. We are. Excellent. All right. Hey, folks. All right. We're trying something, we're trying something new today. Uh, as always, we're going to give everybody a couple minutes to join us. Um, we're actually using a little bit different technology. So a couple things. Um, if you could comment on how the sound is. I don't uh, don't quite know the distance from the I can hear you all right. You can hear yeah. me all right. Okay, great. Excellent. And uh, so we're joining on the computer through Zoom today because I want to take the uh, take a moment at some point to share with you a video that we created of the tanning process that we just went through on a couple of days ago. So Friday. Yeah, so, uh, so we're going to get to that. And uh, before we do, like I said, we'll let a few people come on. Um, if you hadn't heard, we can two more products, and that's why we're talking about cans today. Uh, we have had, uh, we now have four products that have gone into cans. Uh, earlier this year, we did the, uh, the Dolgo and the Sparkling Crab Apple. And uh, just, yet, just on Friday, we did the Petit Blue and the Winnipesaukee Rose. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, before we get to that, a couple of reminders. We're still in the middle of our holiday sale. So if you're interested in our crab apple wine, our sparkling crab apple, our elderberry, hermitage, or passion popper, all four of those or five of those are on sale right now for 25% off. If you're a club member, you get 35% off. Uh, that sale is available both in the tasting room and online. If and you're through, uh, through the 24th. Through the 24th. Right. If you're ordering online and you're a club member, you have to call the tasting room and put your order in through us in order to get the 35%. But uh, everybody else, just uh, just go online. Those products are priced at 25% off, so you'll be fine. Uh, so uh, take advantage of the holiday sale. And uh, what else we got going on? We're, uh, we're open every day, so come on in and see us. We're, we're uh, open every day till Christmas. Uh, get some last minute Christmas shopping in. Yep. We've got some really nice gifts this year in the tasting room uh, with our grooming and some nice glassware and jewelry and things like that. There's some, new, uh, there's some new food items too that I saw at the deli. That I had no, there was like those uh, sauces for um, olive oil and stuff that they oh, made in that nice Oh, display. yes. Uh, uh, no, really good. exciting. Uh, actually, Cucina. Uh, uh, Cucina. Uh, uh, Kitchen. Where, um, where are they out of? Where they're out of Nashville. Oh, great. And uh, we, she came up and spent an afternoon with us a few months ago and was really excited about our wine and, and using some of our wine in terms of her cooking with her oh. oils. And we shared some products with her and she shared some of hers with us. And we were really excited to get uh, her, her product into our tasting room to be available to sell to you if you uh, like it. It's great stuff. I've been using it at home. I'm sort of addicted to it. There's three or four different oh, flavors right. of, uh, that are really nice and I use it all the time. And we're going to be using it in the deli as part of our cooking process as well. So excellent. Glad you brought that up. That's a great. Uh, so, so, uh, Cucina, uh, uh, kitchen. I think, I think that's right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry about that. I, I, uh, I really need to on everything. <laughs> Thing with age, I think. So anyway, um, so I think that's that's enough. I think we got we've okay. been on how many people we got joining us? We have like right. uh, we we uh, we're looking at eight people. Uh, Anna Sullivan says hello. Hello, oh, great, excellent. So, so what are we gonna talk about? Let's let's, let's well, dive right in. Well, you know, I I love it when you say dive right in. That means we should drink. start drinking. Okay, so so let's let's start off with our set. Absolutely, uh, it's such a nice fun. That'll be this glass. Let's go with the tulip glass. Yes. It's a beautiful color. Yep. So we got a couple of things we're going to do today. We're going to talk about each of the four products that we now have in cans. Uh, if you're just joining us on um, Friday, we can our Winnipesaukee Rosé 
and our Petit Blue, beautiful artwork by Deb Lucky, our, our, uh, our resident pan artist. She's uh, well, not resident, I should say that. She's, she's out of New York. She's done all of our pan designs and she did all of our bottled cider designs. So really excited about that. So we're gonna talk about those two. And then we figured we'd also bring in the, the two pan products we did in June, our cider, which we're gonna try right now. And uh, here. So this is an extremely popular, it's, I think it's this year became our most popular product. Most popular liquid. Hand by anyway. hand, we sold more of this bottles than any other product this year. It's really fresh, really um, delicious, very light, easy drinking, about 7%. It's a hard cider. Made with cranberries we get from Cape Cod and a local press cider from Apple Hill Farm in Concord. And uh, just delightful drink. I love drinking this stuff. Mm. It goes with so many things, the tartness and a little bit of sweetness, and it just drinks by itself really lovely. Yeah. And um, both the bottle version of this and the cans are in the state liquor store. So that's just going to continue to provide opportunities for more people to get their hands yeah, this is it's also our most widely distributed product. This is carried in more stores throughout New Hampshire than any other product that we have, right? Yep. So, um, so we thought since we're talking about cans, we're not the only ones. We didn't invent the idea of putting not at all, not at all. Right? In Lots. fact, I think it was five years ago, six years ago. Chuck flew out west to Portland, Oregon, or something like that. And you came back with an underwood. Yeah. And you said, guys, Pretty look wine. at this. Putting wine in cans. Putting wine in cans. It was a Pinot Noir. Yeah. Not this, uh, not this uh, rosé that we have here today. But these guys, Underwood, out of Oregon, were some of the first people to really get the concept of canned wine up. Right. And um, so I wanted to make sure we had one of those. It's That's been going on now for for probably five or 10 years, yeah. uh, the, the, the gradual entrance into the wine and, and panning uh, world. So, so we've been excited about it for about three or four years now, since the first since Chuck brought that back, we started talking about it. And some of the, let's talk about why. Probably the biggest reason that we decided that panning made sense for us is that we're 200 yards from the town docks. And during the summer, Probably 20 or 30 percent of our guests come by arrive boat. here by boat and they walk up the street. So whoa, it's perfect bringing a bottle of petite blue on a boat and then having to bring glasses or plastic cups or something to drink it out of, and then having the glass on the boat where you're barefoot and and also a tremendous number of people come to this region to go hiking. There's right. so many trails and so many wonderful mountains to hike. It's a heck of a lot lighter to carry a couple of cans in your pack right. than bottles. And you got to, you at least can just crush down into a tiny thing when you're done. You still have that big, empty, heavy bottle that you got to pack out. Right. So it's much better for that as well. And for those who aren't interested maybe in drinking the whole bottle, <laughs> which uh, what was that? usually not an issue for us, but there are those who would like to have a smaller portion. Each can is a half a bottle. So if, if two people were to share a can, they would be sharing each a glass of the, the wine or the cider. Uh, whereas if you have a bottle, you, you've got a whole bottle to do that with and, uh, and have to carry that bottle around. And, and so, so that's why we were thinking we should, we should experiment. That does not, don't worry, Petit Blue is not going away in bottle. It's gonna to continue to be offered in bottle as is the rosé. And, uh, and is the case with all of our canned products, we still offer them in, in bottles. So, uh, so don't worry about that. So what's really interesting to me, and I don't know how you guys feel about this, and we'll talk more about it today, is that we've had sparkling crab in a very nice champagne-like bottle with the cork and wire and all that. And it's an elegant thing to, to bring to a dinner, open on a special occasion, to pour around a little flute. This is a completely different product. It's the same liquid. It's the exact same liquid. But because it's in a can, you, I think about it differently. 
Mm -hmm. I think about just opening this up on your boat and drinking. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's yeah. delightful. It's, drinking it out of the can. Isn't is, is that some sort of wine religion sacrilege of some sort? I mean, are we violating the law of wine by drinking wine out of a can? Probably. Well, we're going to violate it all after you brace yourself. So, what do we got to compare here? We got a uh, Chuck brought along a well, this is a a, so a rose from uh, Wood Chuck Hard Cider. Yeah, so, so I thought we might compare that with the cider we just had. Yeah, it's a rose cider. Bubbly fruit flow forward blush cider made with a blend of red apples, delivering a crisp, smooth finish. So it doesn't say what the fruit is that makes it a rosé. I can say all kinds of disparaging things because this is this is the big. Wait, here you go. Hard apple, oh, red, go. hard cider, red apple juice, purple carrots for color, and and, purple carrots, and sulfites carbonated. No artificial ingredients. Oh, purple carrots. Carrot. Purple that's a good carrots. Idea. I a like it. That's approach. a cool idea. Yeah. That's like that's like using some blueberries in our in our gogo. Yeah. Color. Here, let's get the last one. So the, the cranberry cider is refreshing. It has this really nice mouth-watering acidity and really bright fruit flavors and a nice level of carbonation. It's a really, it's a really. So I'm going to drink this one out of the can. So this will be my can, right? You guys get to drink out of can some of the other things, but I want to try this out of the can to see if it's different than the glass. No, I don't. That's out. Color, no, just the our product. Okay. It's different out of the can. I think I mean, it's, it's totally different out yeah. of the can. And it's, and it's, it's, good. it's delightful out of the glass, but it's really nice out of the can. It's yeah. just cold, fill your throat, no swirling around aromatics at all. Mm. Oh, that's, that's good. That was my experience too. When you first, when you first can that, I was quite amazed. And, and I actually enjoy it more. I don't know why. Yeah. I, I like just, it's nice and cold, out of the fridge, yeah. right now. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's easy. It's more, I don't know why. Does it taste different? I don't know. I mean, I it's so much of the taste is, is also, as we talked about, it has to do with so many other variables that it, it's hard to know for sure if actually the taste is different or not. But uh, there it is. So, so what do we got? This, the woodchuck. We might have a technical uh, problem here. Uh -oh. uh, anybody can, Geraldine's let us know that the, the sound is off. Um, bad again, keeps repeating. Better now. Is anybody else having? Um, Sound audio quality issues with our broadcast. Does it seem to be coming through yours? My phone is turned off. Let's get some feedback going. I can hear it okay. It might, it like might, be, might be on Gerald. Maybe Gerald and then. Anybody else let us know if we're having audio problems? So, you know, this has got some interesting flavors going on. This Thanks, Gerald. Cider. I might. Um, it's a little sweet on the finish for me. Yeah. Um, it's sweet for me too. But it's got some interesting flavors. I don't know that they hang together quite personally about it. It's a very cidery. Even it's, more cidery than, than our, our cider. Well, it's more cider. like apple juice. Well, it's, it's a apple. green apple. It's apple. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's so right. weird. When, yeah. when we make an heirloom cider, it's not apple at all. It's a dry heirloom cider. It's they're very distinctive. It's like a champagne, more than the green apple. But so many sort of larger scale ciders um, often will have that Granny Smith green apple character. And I think people think yeah. that's what apples taste like. Yeah. That's what they should taste like in the glass. But historically, that's not the case at all. Hmm. You know, the, the, all the apples that people sought out, the sharps and bitters, you end up with a delightful beverage that's not very happy, mm. but very much an mm -hmm. apple cider, hard cider. Yeah, I don't, I, well, I have to say I'm, I am biased, but I generally don't like sweeter things anyway. And clearly this is, is engineered towards uh, a demographic that, you know, likes the green apple because uh, it's distinguishable. Yeah. Uh, it's, it seems a little less carbonated. So it's a little less, a little, little less fuzzy. It is a little less acidic, and then that's because it's balanced more with a bit more sugar, and it's definitely sweeter. But it doesn't have, yeah, it's it's uh, I guess that it's uh, it's made for 
in my opinion, I guess it's for a mass market of what people think it ought to taste like or what is desirable to the most people. Where the great advantage we have here is that we just make stuff that we like in a way that we like to make sure of stuff that's a little bit. So we're not we're not really beholden to the demand, the, the, the uh, marketing research on what product we will sell. We just make stuff. That we what like. was the price point of? I, I assume it's a lower yeah. price point than ours. That they're making it at a much larger scale, yeah. distributing it I much more know. widely than we are. I think this. I bought it a six pack and it was like fourteen dollars maybe. Okay, so it's yeah, it's quite a bit. It's, you know, two fifty a piece of the four dollars, five dollars, almost half the price. Yeah, I would say that probably does. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 it certainly made the you know, appealing. It's interesting they can use the word rose on the front. Isn't that Bob? Have you dealt with some of the TTD issues? Is that a wine? Can you call a cider rose? Remember how we, you know, wanted to use the word burgundy, just as a descriptor on the back of the label if they get rejected. It's interesting that you're allowed to use the word rosé right up front yeah, I don't on know. something that's not a rosé wine. I don't know. It's, it's not a rosé wine, but it's a cider. And it's, probably, it's a cider. Yeah, so it's probably made under different... Made under maybe it's under beer licenses. Beer licenses. Beverage. Yeah. So is that a 375 or is it 12 ounces? 12 ounces. Yeah. Ah, that's, ah, that's it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can use right. rosé in the wine business. Yeah, that's we right. We use it on maybe, our maybe rosé is a little sake rosé. You know. Well, rosé is a reference to color, is so it's not going to block that term down. It's a reference to color, so you can't. You like can't. a document style. They could have just taken that. Right? They, they could have wanted it. Yeah, they should have made sure it Okay, so uh, woodchuck was a nice comparison. Yeah. Otherwise, but um, very different. Yeah, different, very different. different animal. This different, is different. bigger, bolder, uh, more flavor. Yeah. I think yeah. this is yeah. lighter. It's lower in alcohol. Um, you could probably drink more of this it would, because it's, it is lower in alcohol and it's, it's light in character and flavor. Yeah. It doesn't have that that grippiness in the back that sort of that invite you back for another sip kind of experience. Right. Like Chuck said it's a little less carbonated. Yeah, but. I think you guys both hit the nail on the head that, that I think this product is made for a little bit larger market. It's, it's going to have a broader appeal to people who like uh, sweeter, people who like lighter, easier, more a little less. This is more, beer. I think, for the more serious cider Yeah, yeah, six more of those alcohol. Before. Ours is what? Yeah, yeah, actually, that's seven yeah, percent. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So, what's right. next? How about um, well, we either break here and go right to Petit Bleu and then do two rosés, rosés, or we stick with the rosé and say Petit Bleu bread. Let's, um, I think. Do you think we take it yet? I, I don't know. I, I, I could go either way. We could we could diverge right now and, and do the red wine. And then do the rosés. I, I, I want to go jump into the rosé, into the uh, Petit Bleu, because I love this can. Well, let me see. Yeah. Let me see. So the reason we, we did the technology difference today is I wanted to share a video that I created of the can to keep up. So let me see if I can do that for you right now. All right. Hopefully that this will work. All new stuff here, technology. Let's see if you see it coming on here. It's going to be supposed to delay. I drank it. Yeah, that's the bottom. All right. Can you hear it? I hope everybody can see that. Yeah. Can you hear? Can you hear us talking over the?
So there it is, folks. That was the first. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, that was that was that was a lot of videos. Yeah, it's really great. Wow. I can remember that, you know, going through and the candy line is running and Bob is angling here and going over there and getting it over here and getting these different shots. It looks great. It's really, it's an amazing process to watch because everything is going in sequence, of course, the whole production. Right? And if a can gets crooked or something goes wrong, it messes everything up and they got to get back in line with it. Well, I have to tell you, Ironheart Canning is the company that brings their canning line, canning line to us to set up our canning. They're such a great group of people. They do an amazing job. They're easy to work with. They're very, very technically skilled and, uh, and, and precise. They, you know, it's really about precision to get this right, and they, they care a lot about that. I yeah, this was three, three new guys out of the one of the guys I'd seen before from the first one we did back in June. Yep. And all, all of them are right on cue. They're sharp about what they're doing. Very they're professional. Knowing, they're very sensitive and very professional, very um, supportive. What do you need? We'll take care of that. You know, do you want us to take care of that? Okay, fine, we'll do that. Whatever you want, that's what we're going to do. They're super. Yeah. Really. Very, very, very customer oriented. And I yeah. like that. It's not like we really get that experience with a lot of things we do today. And it's yeah, throughout the, the company. When I email yeah. to Sarah or to Joe, they write back yeah. over the weekend. They'll come back. No, don't worry, Ken. We'll take care of it. If you're still unsure about how it's going to lay out, we'll bring somebody by beforehand. Yeah. And I can't say enough about it. They, they're great. All right. So, so let's, let's right crack here. open a petite blue. Petite blue. This is a first. This is first time first. It's the first time I've ever done a still. It's the only one of our products that is still. Tell us about what that means. In the so beginning. yeah, so so most wine that, that people consume on the planet is still. It doesn't have any bubbles, any carbonation to it. And then there's a whole you know a bunch of sparkling wines and these rosés and things are sparkling. But this is a, a still wine, like most wine that you consume, uh, a, a, a bottle of Chardonnay, a bottle of uh, Pinot Noir. That's a it's a still product. Now when you put liquid into a can. When it's carbonated, the can stays stiff and hard because all those bubbles are trying to escape, but they're sealed in. Right. If you fill up a can with a still wine and just drop a lid on it and squeeze it, the can is soft. Crushable. It's squishy. It's crushable. It feels really weird. So how do they do that with our petite blue to make it rigid? They dose it with liquid nitrogen. And so a little bit of liquid nitrogen goes into the can before the lid gets dropped onto it. And liquid nitrogen stays liquid at like minus 60 degrees Celsius. So it's boiling at room temperature. And you see this smoky steam you can pouring see that on. In the video. And you can see in the video. So as the, the lid goes on and it gets crimped, there's nowhere for that vapor to escape. So the can gets stiff. And they have to dial it in just right because if they put in too much liquid and then seal it, the can explodes yes. or gets you know bumped out on the bottom right, or something. Right. So they have to dose it just right. But that's what they did. And, and you know, there were a few that were slightly soft, and we just pulled those off the canning line and can right. consume them at any time. Yeah. yeah. So, so if, you, if you missed the uh, the dosing, it's pretty cool. You can watch that video again. It's on our Facebook page, so you can watch it anytime you like. It's also on YouTube. And uh, you can see that one section where the steam is coming off of all the cans as it's running through the line. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah. So Ken, you should do a side by side. Petit blue in a can. I have done it. You should try it. I, I know already. I've done this experiment and I enjoy it. You try it. Drink it out of the glass and drink it out of the can and see what you think. In the glass is just Chuck rich, it just too. fruity, yeah. delicious petite blue. I like this vintage. This is the um, the first um, packaging of our first vintage of our 2020 Petit Bleu. So this was made back in January um, or February and was just now canned. The remainder um, from this run, I've got in a tank over there that's going to go into bottle. But we still, we're still we um, still selling the 19 Petit Bleu. Yeah. And every vintage like a grape wine is different because the the blueberries that grow a particular year, just like the Pinot Noir that grows a particular year, is different. Mm -hmm. The environment, the rainfall, um, 
the character of the ripeness and flavor of the fruit changes. The blueberries, the wild blueberries in Maine are very consistent in their complexity of their flavors are really fantastic. But the sugar levels can fluctuate a little bit from had it as low as 10 and a half bricks to as high as this last year's vintage is 16 bricks. So we had a, a drought, warm August right. spell, and a lot of the water dropped out of it. A lot of the sugars really developed, and it created just fantastic blueberries. Mm, that's, that's delicious. So that's not in this, this that's, that's one. That's in my later yeah. vintage of 20 Petit Blue, and we'll be in the 21 Petit Blue. So, so, so what's the difference between the can and the glass bottle? Um, first impression, the, the, a better presentation out of the glass. And the reason why I think is, first of all, you don't have nose interaction. So you can't, you can't start to understand the characteristics because they, you normally will smell the wine before you drink it. So it, gives, it kind of prepares your taste buds. You don't get that chance with this. You're just pouring the wine into your mouth green. But the other thing is, is that I think it needs to open up a bit. I think first cracking it out of the can, it's, it's, it, 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 it's kind of tight. It's kind of a, maybe, it's almost like a, I don't want to say harsh, but there's a, it's closed. It's, it's yeah, closed. there's a, it's tight. And, and I'm wondering if, as I sit here and let it sit open, if it's going to change in the can, because now air is getting in there and it's going to change in the way that it changes when you pour it into a, into a glass. I, I bet you it will. This, this wild blueberries um, have a very unique, really interesting relationship with air. I mean, and you discovered this with letting deep blue get oxidized yes. for a month. And we now employ that all the time. There's a couple barrels in the back room where the wine is just getting oxidized. So that is interesting. It could be, and this just got canned on Friday. So we got trapped in there and it's in this new environment. It's not quite, doesn't know what's going on and it's sealed in there. Um, I, I, I think I'm already, I, you know, it's so subtle, but I think it's already changed just sitting there being open for a few minutes. Yeah, um, but I don't know. How did you find it when you did it? I, I think you you did not care for it out of the can as much as I did when we had it That's with correct. the um, with the stew that Maya made. Yeah, after the canning event, Chuck came over for dinner and we opened up the cans. And um, yeah, no, I'm not a fan out of the can for all the reasons that you, you said. And the experience with the glass is um, so much more dynamic with the aromatics and the shape of the glass and all that. Uh, uh, stuff that happens. Um, what I do like about all of this, though, is that the quality of the wine in the can is fantastic. I mean, I would never know that that wine came out of a can. Yeah, and I like that because there is, a, you know, a stigma about, you know, well, we had nitrogen charge it or it came out of a can. It can't be good. I mean, it's sort of there's a maybe a cheapening idea, and I would say that as a vessel for moving wine into a glass. To have the best experience with it possible, it's a great deal. It works well. Works fine. But so when we have petite blue on your boat, we're going to bring some plastic glasses. No, I'll drink it out of the can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to understand the, 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 where you were going here. I hate plastic how much, glasses. How much of the we, we do have plastic glasses. How much yes. better is it in the glass compared to out of the can? Yeah. yeah. And I, I think, you know, what I discovered when I just did it now was really subtle. It wasn't an in-your-face difference. Yeah. Um, there was a difference, and I think it was worth pointing out there was a difference. But at each time I've sipped off of this, the difference is becoming less and less. And that could be psychological. I might, you know, I, I might just... Or it could be the air. Or, or it could be the fact that it's now opening up. Yeah. There's air that's in there. It's, the more I drink, the more air is in there. Yeah. And, uh, and so it's... It's much more consistent with the experience of the glass. Although I, I do enjoy one of the nice things about enjoying a red wine is swirling its mouth. Sure, it's part of the process. So so if the opportunity is there, I'm going to pour it into a glass. Yeah. If I'm on a boat having a yeah. having a good time out on the lake, I'm going to be perfectly happy drinking it out right, of the right, can. Right, right, right. Yeah, I really yeah. I like the flavor. One of the most amazing experiences we had was drinking some of the red scare out of that wine skin. Oh, oh the wine skin. Out of yeah, the boat bag that yeah. you had. Remember yeah. that? 
Yeah. And that just tasted fantastic. There was no, there was no, no, no airing it out, and no it swirling around. Uh, what's up with that? It was just, you know, squeeze yeah. it into your mouth and it was yeah. just well, fantastic. It has something to do with the fact that it was 10 below zero and we were on the lift, <laughs> top of Cannon Mountain. I think just about anything with alcohol in it probably would have been fantastic. Effect. It could be wrong. It might be something else going on. <laughs> All right. So, what's so, so we have something to compare it to. Yeah. Here, Jeff. Right. Tell us uh, about that. Oh, I don't remember, Bob. Can you read it? This a uh, house oh, wine, original red blend. Who makes this? Uh, house. House. This is out of Walla Walla, Washington. So Washington State. Mm -hmm. Big, bold, jammy, and smooth. Mm -hmm. It does not mention the grapes. So. All right. We'll this is just a, a blend of a blend of uh, red wine. It's so interesting opening up a red <laughs> a big bold jammy red right out of a black can. I'm gonna go same with, glass. Same glass? Uh yeah, because we're because you're doing the rose yeah, over the other. Drink that lap. Here, I'll give you a minute. Yeah, give me a rinse. Well, that's yeah, this is a different one. I'm gonna have to pound this. Oh, yuck. Oh god. Chuck, be nice. <laughs> Somebody worked hard. Somebody said be honest, I think. Don't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just a juxtaposition. Here, have some more. No, well, here's, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yes, please. Thank you. No, I say that only because we've, what the Petite Blue is a Beaujolais, Pinot Noir, really light, fruity, easy to drink, quaffable. And what I've chosen here for a comparison, and hence the yuck, is that this is a big, uh, uh, Barrel aged red wine jammy. is full of jam, and it's it's spice. just full of spice. It's just not a good juxtaposition to to the. Um, it the smells pretty good once it opens up, but I like the I like the aroma of these more than I like drinking them. Oh, really? They work to drink to me. Yeah. Ah, a lot of people love this stuff, and I and I get it. I can see it's it's rich. It's like you know the people that love their double IPAs, but that stuff is just mm, yes, well, it's tiring. It's just too much. You got to drink it in, in moderation. Who, who gets to drink this out of the can? That's what I want to know. Me, I'll, I'm fine passing on that one. Sounds like you love it, Chuck. Uh, no, this is all about the experience, which I do love. Um, what I will say is that I, I again would say that a can still wine poured into a glass is going to be, as long as it hasn't been sitting in the can too long, as good as the experience I think we'd have with the bottle of, of the same one. You know what's interesting to me about this, and I, I wonder if there's uh, if that's done on purpose. This has very reduced grippy tannins to it. Most big jammy reds that you get out of Washington or wherever will have a lot of tannic grip on the back end. Yeah, it doesn't. This doesn't. No. As a and it may be on purpose because if you're chilling this down or you're drinking it out of the can, you may not want that grip grab you. Do you get that? It's really. Well, I do get that, but it's I don't like a, know that they necessarily intend it. Maybe they. Because there are some wines out of a bottle that, that don't achieve that either. Mm -hmm. That could be a uh, a style issue. It could be a fault. It could be it could be a lot yeah. of things. So I don't know that we can assume just because it's in a can. Because honestly, if you know, think about drinking a red wine out of a can, I would like to think that I'm going to have the same experience. The can is just the packaging. The wine and the you should is, want the is, same, is same, 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 yeah, same yeah. experience. And I don't know what the truth is, Sheriff, but I would expect as we made the Petit Blue exactly the same as it goes into a bottle in the can. That I they would do the same thing. The same. Yeah. If they might have chosen the wine that they thought would be yeah, best expressed. More appropriate in the can, yeah. So would it be inappropriate if I swirled my can? Max. I don't know. I think you put your thumb over and shake. Careful when it starts to go all the way down the front of your shirt. <laughs> I mean, you know, in, in hundred years, it's going to be the thing. It's like, oh, remember when we used to have glassware? Yeah. You know, before yeah. cans became yeah. vogue. Before straws. Swirl, but you have to hold the cans with a little like. Well, you know, there's a there's like a company a that, uh, there's a company that makes a wine glass with a sealed top. Yeah, you peel off the top and then you just drink out of it. Yeah, but it's a glass. It's like a, a stemless that's, wine glass. That's yeah. that's a smart marketing move, I think, because it's you know, on Shark Tank, I think. I don't, I don't think it's carried off beautifully, but but um, still, the concept is just like you're saying yeah. that that because we're drinking a red wine out of a can, we're missing the aromatics yeah. of this. Yeah. 
So what do you think, Chuck? Yeah. Out of the can or out of the glass? Same, the same experience uh, for me with the Petit Bleu. Uh, you do get some of the aromatics out of the little um, mouth hole thing, but um, it's just not as good or dynamic uh, an experience as one gets from this. Well, this is super duper glassware, but uh, it, you just get that whole mixing of the the, the, the vapors and all the flavors that you're going to taste, you get like a, a pre-sample of what it's going to be like. So your brain just gets in tune with what to expect. And then you have the, all those flavors that are more easily jump out. So therefore, all in all, it's much more flavorful with the aromatics combined. And that's my experience. I, and it's what I'm finding interesting is, is that this, this wine is what I would expect if I was to go uh, on a budget to the to the supermarket, grab a quick red blend at a at a reasonable price to right. have with some some uh, some quick dinner at home. That's what I'd expect. Or if you go out to a restaurant, and you order the house red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're you're having a pizza or a bowl of spaghetti, and you it's order the, the house, house red. Yeah, and that's that's what it is. <laughs> it, and, that, and that's I think uh, true to their name. They're they're hitting it right on the mark. I, it's I think utterly it's a, forgettable. It's a, it's a credit. It's just. Straight up red. It's a, it's yeah, red. It's, it's which is what you want. Perfectly That's enjoyable to have, you know, to, to have with a light meal, and you're not spending a lot of money on your meal. You're not spending a lot of money on your wine. Yep. You're just enjoying it. You're uh, you're appreciating drinking wine, and uh, you're not have to spend a lot of money to do it. What's Nothing the price point on that? It's like it was like five fifty. Okay, so that's it, like a ten dollar bottle. bottle of wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's it. So that's yeah. a very nice ten dollar bottle of wine. Yeah. Yeah, and I would I would drink this. I mean, I would, yeah. I'd never snub my nose at it. You know, I I would choose. You know, if I'm if I'm if I'm up in it, up in my ante a little bit, I would choose something different. If I you know if I really wanted to get something nice that that fit that suited my palate, I'd probably choose something different. But totally drinkable. Yeah. Well, I think, um, as I walked through the supermarket today to buy this, I went to the the can section uh, in my local uh, Hannaford store. And it, that can section has grown exponentially over really the has. last, say, even six months. Wow. Yeah, it's become, and there's a lot of different styles of cans, and then there's the boxes and all that stuff. That shelf went from this space to a whole aisle in the last eight months, maybe right. a year. So this is where it's going. But as a wine snob, I walk by there and I go, Shaw, that's all junk that they couldn't sell it any other way. So they put it in a can. I'm going to go and you know go look careful because but that's it. But that's but that's not the can. point. And but the it is not truth the truth is that <laughs> right. what I discovered this summer and with our canned products. Wow, what a great way to put place to put wine. It's environmentally much better. Flavor wise, we're not. These are drink now wines, right? So we're not putting our we're not having a barrel a, 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 a wine cellar full of cans, right? That would just not be sexy at all. This is what you. This is for what you drink now. It's it's great. I don't have a problem yeah. with it at all, and and I am increasingly more a, a consumer of, of these products. You you have consumed quite a bit of the Dolgo and, and Crown. My Dolgo, Crown Apple Cider. Yes. Yes. There's. I, I think you have. We're almost out of Dolgo, so um, yeah. Don't come to Herman Woods to buy it because I'm going to buy it all. <laughs> well, you better get here fast. <laughs> here you it's go, awesome. Chuck. Oh. Open up the oh. Dolgo. I love favorite. this. I love this. So it's the heirloom crab apple that we have our, our sparkling wine and distilled wine that we has been with us forever. And I love this label. I think it's really, really, yeah. it's great. really classy. Uh, Deb, you, Deb does an amazing yeah. job. Thank you to Deb. Deb Lucky again. Look her up. She she does children's books. Uh, she's a very talented illustrator and artist. She's out in New York. DebLucky.com is her website if you want to see some of her other work. But uh, we're going to we're going to go with this, this one. Okay. Woo! Look at that. Thank you. Thank you. So Dolgo is is um, dangerously drinkable. Yes. It is, and this yes, one I know many you times. can just drink it. it. This has what I what I'm calling the heady topper phenomenon. So. On, the, on a can of the Hetty Topper popular um, Vermont beer that went viral, uh, you're just supposed to drink it out of the can. And you know, for those, those of us aficionados, a can drinking out of a can that we're supposed to do that is kind of nonsense. And we tried it, we did an experiment. 
and it's it's actually it is different and it is good. It, it, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is. There's this je ne sais quoi there, and although this is I think better served in a glass because it's carbonated, I think the can experience drinking out of the can with something that's carbonated is different from still wine, and I like it tremendously just out of the can. The problem is that in three sips, half a bottle of wine is gone. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not a good thing, particularly if you decide to open another one. <laughs> you better be, you know, locked down with your straitjacket on if you, yeah. you could get carried away with this. But it's so drinkable. It's so delicious. So there's the word of caution. It's this. such a great uh, apple. The, the Dolgo crab apple is an heirloom variety that, like you've told us before, Bob, was very popular in the 18, late 1800s in this country for, for jam, for smuckers, because it made such a great jam. You made jam out of them too yep. at one point. Yep. Out of the tree that we made our first yeah. crab apple one. But they're just, and they're, you can find these apples in different places. I've been, you know, in Portsmouth or something, driving around and you'll see a Dolgo tree in well, the edge of some parking lot or something like that. very, very popular as a decorative tree because yeah. it has that really bright fruit in the in the fall and that wonderful flower in the yeah, spring. Beautiful flowers and in it's spring. very abundant. So it's it's a gorgeous tree. Yeah. A lot of people plant them in their yard. Do you have any questions or comments there, Chuck? We well, know? we've missed a whole, whole, whole lot of conversation here. Well, let's, uh, let's hear it. So uh, let's see, we've got uh, Janice Sullivan, Gary Parker, uh, Mary Shea uh, uh, Benison. Uh, oh, yes. We talked about the the, the value of um, of uh, cans in terms of recycling. Right? Yes. So very good. You point. know, yeah. I know where Wolfgang is in the south of France. You have to take everything to these trash cans throughout the town and put them in um, appropriate each appropriate place. place. And cans, uh, bottles are such a pain in the neck. I mean, they are bulky, heavy noisy, breaky, and these, you just smush them in the, in the tiny things or not, and it's very lighter, it's... Well, actually, it's statistically, about 80% of all cans, maybe even higher, get turned into new cans, whereas bottles, it's only like 20%. Yeah, I learned from, from my daughter, when she was in college, she was taking a whole course on, on recycling, and glass is some of the worst, mm -hmm. because it's so much energy it takes so much energy to to melt down and to reclaim that glass, right? As whereas opposed to recycling aluminum is much easier. Plastic well, and is much easier. Environmentally, a truckload of glass with liquid in it weighs something like three or four times the amount of the same truckload with cans with yeah. liquid in it. Yeah. And um, so moving the product around, both for the for the industry and for the consumer, and the let the fact that it is not as recyclable it doesn't get recycled it ends up in the landfills um, so glass is far less uh good for the environment and there's a lot of industry people that are trying to figure out how yeah. to solve that problem and i think one of the things that that sounds like it's already happening which is really good is that there's more shelf space taken up by cans of wine on on the shelves in the supermarket yes, which is happening. great because yeah. Our industry has really shifted in the past decade or two to wines that are meant to be consumed within a year. Yeah. And cans, everybody should know, cans are not good for storing wine for a long period of time. Absolutely not. They're only good for short-term transition of that liquid. But so much of our consumer format now is to consume the wine within a year of when it was made. So, and so we so, really blow in our, our our consumers' minds when we when we start talking about screw caps. Yeah. <laughs> We're taking this whole other leap now. We're going from corks to screw caps to cans. Right. <laughs> so, yes, it sounds like sacrilege again. It's really it? demanding that our, our uh, well, it's our important. And it's not are, and it's not done without careful consideration. Exactly. I mean, we we like fine products, and we're not talking about putting red scare in a can. Right. This is a product that ages for a year or two right. before it gets put into a bottle with a cork or a gas permeable screw cap and then gets laid down for five or 10 years in glass. And that provides you a much better product in the end. That's the only way to do it that we know of right now. 
and cans are for a different so, product. So we say that now, but what do you think? In 30 years from now? Oh, it's gonna be different. Yeah. What's, the, what's the world gonna look like? It's gonna be a different place. And they're going to, packaging is gonna be considered differently and, and people's mindset is gonna be different. A lot of this, as we've talked about, a lot of the cork versus screw cap is, is about people's mindset. It's not as much about, as much about what's, what's better or worse or what's more valuable or not. It's really just how people feel emotionally about it. Yeah. So who knows, a whole nother generation behind us and another generation behind them might start to come to think about that stuff differently. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. My observation is that, so having had a, a few sips of, of Dolgo, we just went off into a very long diatribe about life, the universe and everything, only after one or two sips. Imagine we, after a whole can. <laughs> and we didn't even talk about the one. It's that good, you just drink it and it's just, <laughs> And then you go off into the world of your thoughts and streams of consciousness and everything else. This is the Dolgo problem. And it is the Dolgo problem. The Dolgo yeah, problem. It's a Dolgo you problem. heard it here first. <laughs> Stephen Hawking. Problem. Stephen Hawking will tell you about the Dolgo problem. It sounds like some physics conundrum, you know, some Mobius strip that you can't escape, some interstellar issue of time that doesn't work. Yes, yes, the fifth dimension. All right, so we have a fifth dimension comparison. Okay. We have this rosé bubbles. Rosé bubbles. That's also out of Washington rose, State. Right? That's also out of Washington State. So let's compare that to the to the Dolgo. So this is the uh, Underwood. I'm sure you've seen this. This is probably one of the most popular. One of the, as we said earlier, one of the first products to go into can. I'm gonna give you a little rinse while we got some comments. Yeah. Uh, Wolfgang likes the conversation. Wolfgang is back. Wolfgang is yeah. back. All right, Wolfgang. Glad you could join us all these times. Cheers, Wolfgang. Just, this is just a rinse. Oh, it's nice and dry. Very pink. Very pink. Wow. It's almost the same color as the can. It's the same color as the can. That's one thing you don't get, you know, when you're drinking it out of a can, mm -hmm. you have no appreciation for color, clarity, oh, catching right. the light, that's right. none of that. Mm -hmm. So unless you pour it into a nice glass, you you never get to appreciate that beautiful color. Or, or the can is already the color, and you can appreciate the can, and then just open it up and then chug it. You could. You could. You could do that. You could. You could do that very often. I mean, you could, do, you could chug like one, and then you'd be in big trouble. Again, it doesn't give the, the varietal. We don't know the grapes that go into this. That's Walla Walla, Washington. Right? Yeah, we just saw Washington State. Could be a Pinot. It's probably a blend. Yeah. Yeah, they grow about everything in, 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 in the new California. Mm -hmm. Cool. Nice carbonation. I, I, actually, I like it. Nice, tiny bubble. Mm -hmm. Straight ahead. Yep. No, no great you know, funk or unique character. Right. Nice dry character, not too sweet at all, which is really pleasing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I thought so many sort of targeted to the mainstream products will often up the sugar. To me, it's yeah. a great detriment to, the, to yeah. the product in the end. No, it's not there. This has a little bit of that sugar, but it's it's balanced. It's I think it's balanced nicely. Yeah. It doesn't have the, the, the wow factor that the Dogo has. I mean, the, the dough goes much more on the cider side of things, being an apple, an apple-based product. This is much more a really nice rosé. That's carbon. Yeah. And it's just very simple, very straightforward, it's nice, nice, easy drinking, uh, no flaws. I, I really like it a lot. It, it, could, it could go sailing with me, actually. Yeah, it could. <laughs> but I still prefer the dough. I'll dump it overboard and grab the dough. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's kind of interesting, guys. As I, I've been late to the game with cans. I don't. I don't tend to drink canned product at home. I don't buy canned wine. Well, double IPA is true. No, you don't drink any of that, do you? Why? No, beer. I drink canned beer all day long. <laughs> Sometimes. So, but no, canned wine. I don't. I don't buy canned yeah, wine. Yeah. I've never yeah. gone to the store and purchased a canned wine and brought it home for the for the purposes of of any. Yeah. I've only bought a bottle of wine. Now, this is teaching me that. Um, I'm late to the game. There's, there's, there's some options. There's some options out there. Yeah. But the good news is that we make four of them. So 
I don't need to worry about it as much. I don't need to go to the grocery store because we have some wonderful products to choose from. But, think but about when it. I go out kayaking with Daryl, yeah. I can bring a can of wine and feel perfectly safe happy. about it. Whereas I wouldn't bring a bottle of wine high tech. Right. It just probably would not. Oh, no, bring it up on the rocks. Yeah, deep. exactly. Yeah. So. But you know, it's you, you could keep a four pack of this red blend in your cupboard. Guests come over. I want a I want a regular red blend. You know they they're not into wine. Yeah. So they Wolfgang, wanna... Wolfgang came came over to your house. He said, I really want to try a, Cal a West Coast wine. You just go to the cabinet, pull out a can. Yep. Blood, 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 blood. You'd be happy as yeah. possible. No, Wolfgang host. So we're gonna dig into some old Red Scare and some Poplar Mead or he something like that. He's like that new thing. Uh, really? Wow. Are you listening to this, Wolfgang? <laughs> <laughs> so, Underwood Rosé, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Really, 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 this is really opening sure. up my world. Yeah, very good. Very good. I do. I do agree that the Dolgo is more interesting, more complex. Um, I, and if I was to have to choose, I would choose the Dolgo. Of course, I'm biased. Very biased, but. But still, not yeah. a bad product. So the point of this is to really, this is about talking about cans. I mean, I, right. we, as we say all the time, there's a lot of great products out there. There's a lot of great wine. It really is. Uh, we love it when you drink ours, but we know and we think you should drink others too. Absolutely. The, the wine experience would be so shallow if you only drank one type of wine. So, uh, so we want to encourage that. So. All right, Lance. Talk, talk a little bit about this label. Oh, because this was so much fun to go through. So, so early on, we we asked uh, Deb Lucky again to create a label for Winnipesaukee Rosé, and she came up with three or four different variations. And and uh, and honestly, we all struggled. We were, we weren't sure where we were going with it. Well, you know, it was really interesting because one of them. Was basically taking that beautiful watercolor yep. that is on the sparkling rose bottle and putting that into a can. And being of our age and history with wine, that has its first affinity to us because it's, it doesn't shock, it doesn't um, throw up any sort of weird flags. It's like, oh, that looks nice. This is a nice product. But That's a nice rendition. But then we saw this stuff with the fish and with the airplane in the clouds. And you love the one with the fish right out of the gate. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, because we're on a lake, right? Yeah. Well, it was interesting because right out of the gate, even though we were all sort of inclined in the instructions we sort of gave Deb when she when we asked her to design this label was to, to, to at least make an attempt to transfer the, the, the classic label to the can. But we all sort of agreed that there was something wrong with that. But it was done right on the bottle. We needed to depart from it and do something different. Yeah, yeah. And then we had to figure out what the other options were that sort of met that need. And and although I think you're right, Chuck was was more uh, inclined on the fish. But generally, the three of us were really completely unsure. Yeah. Would fish be an appropriate way? Not only fish, but blue green fish to sell. <laughs> One of our classic rosés, right, right, right. and and we were really torn, and we didn't know how people would react. We didn't know how it would be perceived on the shelf. I showed that to my twenty-eight-year-old daughter, and she loved it right out of the gate. Bam! That's great. Well, great and thank you to to Deborah's Deborah's uh, uh, knowledge and and, uh, and background as an artist, and uh, she. Deborah made it made a really good argument for why we really should should consider this. She wanted this label. She really liked it. And she really wanted us to consider it. So she made a, a good case. We made some variations or some change, slight changes to it over time. And I have to say, somewhat reluctantly, I decided at one point, you know, with, with the, the three of us decided, that let's let's give it a try. Let's see how it works. And well, both of these were like that. We spent a lot same of time. With the same, with the, same with the petite blue, yes. Um, although I showed that around to customers and everybody loved it so much. It was just, it became really obvious that that was going to be a big hit. I didn't have a chance to do that with the, with the rose. Big, yeah. But, 
ever since that first rosé label showed up, I have been enamored with it. I'm so glad we made this decision. I hope you agree. I'd love to hear from you on that subject, if you, if what your opinion is about the, the approach we took on this label. But any comments from the, from the Facebook? Nope. All right. Are we going to open it? We're going to open it. That's good. Everybody ran down to the grocery store to buy some cans of wine. <laughs> Uh, you know, we have another event to do right after this one. I know. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. <laughs> we'll have leftovers, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Bob, uh, Wolfgang wants to see it again. Oh, yeah. What a Pisaki Rose. And again, it's the exact same. The screen is, is, right on the is that too close? The camera. Laptop. The camera. Center, there, oh, camera's on the laptop. Oh, it's on the computer. Okay. You know, it's interesting. This wine is different than the Dolgo. It has a different level Very of complexity, different, different okay. oh, here we go. flavors, and character, yet still obviously a rose in, in character. Rose and, finish. And weight and, and flavor. I love the apple leaf compound of this. You know, the cranberries are there, but the apples really carry it all the way. Mm -hmm. It's an apple wine. Mm. Should have been a little colder. But mm, that's great. I think this is the first time I've had it out of the can. Yeah. You're not having it out of glass. <laughs> oh. This could also be the first time I have it out of the can. How do you think of that? What about that? Pretty big. So to me, this is exactly like it is in the bottle. And I do love the label on the bottle, I have to say. Yes. What do you think? Drink it out of the can. Okay. So carbonated. Carbonated. It changes everything. It, yes. It makes all the flavors a part of, uh, become more lively, or they vaporize them up. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's much more active, much more conducive to drinking out of the can. And, well, um, again, those bubbles, no those bubbles are delivering the aroma. So there's more, you're getting more of the aroma in your mouth, and, and, and even probably as you approach the can, you're getting that aroma oh, cool. bursting out of that bursting can. Out. Wow. So this is the first time I've had this out of the can. That's going to be a contender for your Dolgo fix in the afternoon uh, every day. Can yes. Have one of those instead. Uh, yes. It tastes very different to me out of the can, uh -huh. and, it, and, uh, and I'm not sure that the dogo has that. Does it have something to do with the fish? <laughs> one of the fish just tried to bite it. I think maybe we've had too many of these. <laughs> I see them actually literally swimming through the can now. Uh oh, that's troubles. What did you put in here? Fish. Fish. <laughs> Does not taste like fish at all. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. I think I think this will work. Yeah, I think it'll work. I, I love that label. I love the product. One of the one of the really nice things about having four canned products, each in a four pack, is that we can put together a mix. Four pack. What? One of each. How's that possible? Does that make right. sense? You have four different products that are being served in four packs. So why not have a four pack with one of each? If Santa, so. if Santa Claus loved me, he would bring me a whole bunch of these. If you want to try Hermit Woods canned products, we now sell a four pack. We call it our sampler pack of each of the four cans. You can get that in the tasting room. And uh, so if you're interested, just let us know you'd like the sampler pack. So we got the four wines. That are in can and all packaged together. I awesome. love samplers. I mean, uh, I, I love this concept, and it's really, um, it's, it's, you know, when I go to a place and I'm looking to buy some beer or something like that, and there's a there's a sampler pack. That's always interesting because then you can try different flavors with one purchase, which is great. So that's actually a good uh, 
a good segue because we are at five o'clock. Oh, we missed one, but it's okay. We're at five o'clock. Yeah, we have to get on to the next one. We do need to get on to the next one. I think it's probably best. So, so we we did have it. Yeah. We will be drinking this. Don't you worry, folks. Yeah. Um, our, tune into our club event at five thirty. Yeah, right? we'll have it then. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the next wine we were going to open, but we do have a, another event we got to get to. So we're going to wait on this. This is premium wine, Crafters Union, Grace and Delicacy Rosé out of California. So this will so, be interesting. So this is in the supermarket. So feel free to to, to go out and try some if you like. Don't you always worry about something that tells you that they're they're premium? premium? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like Why sanitary cleaners. That? Why would you go to a place that calls themselves sanitary cleaners? I don't know, but many people do. I, I think we digress, gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a question from Gary Parker that asks about the, the Wadamasaki Rosé. Uh, is it a rosé? He says, that's his question, is it a rosé? Well, it's an apple cranberry wine that's sparkling, that's pinkish in color, right? That's right. And we call that a rosé, but it's not like a South of France rosé. It is, it is, it is a rosé rose color. It, it is a rosé color. color. I think this is it's a just really, like this called rosé. So right. I think you have to ask this question. Is, is not the moniker rosé, no matter where you go in the world, simply stating that the wine is of a color that is rosé. Yeah, is it not? Well, that's what we, we it is. And what's interesting, in the past years. five years, rosés have moved almost all the way to a straw colored wine. Barely any perception of pinkness. It's been kind of a trend that way. Well, I think uh, uh, white Zinfandel has sort of, uh, and what's fascinating is that the rosé killer is called white Zinfandel. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's, right. Which is a rosé. Which is a rosé. Which is white Zinfandel. Yeah. So it really, I think that name, rosé, is really just a reference to the color. It is it not is, there, there you go, Gary. anything else. So this is a rosé, and that's a rosé, and if it's pink, it's a rosé. And uh, if, you, if the person who makes it chooses to give it that moniker, so I don't think that's the variable here uh, that, that's important. That's important is the taste. Right. <laughs> so, this is a rosé made with purple carrots. Yeah, there you go. So, you know, it's rosé. That's what I I thought all rosés had purple carrots in them. Right. I kind of like that idea. It's interesting. Yeah. It opened up some ideas. Uh, all yeah. right. Well, there you have it. <laughs> So, so in. thank you. We we uh, we have another event to go to. If you're out there, if you're one of our club members, I know there's some of our club members are out there. Gary, I um, hope you're joining us at 5:30. We're going to be uh, we're going to be having our our club, our annual club party is going to be virtual this year. Uh, it's not ideal, but it's, it's what I think is safest and best for everybody. For now, we look forward to uh, to, to our next opportunity to get together in person, which uh, I don't think is too far around the corner. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you uh, feel educated about cans. And please go out there, try our cans, and try some other cans try some others. from Absolutely. the supermarket and uh, in the liquor store. There's lots of other choices. Lots of people are canning these days, and there's some really fun stuff. So, so have at it. Enjoy yourself. We look forward to seeing you next Monday. We don't know what we're doing next Monday, do we? Not yet, but we will. I'll, it will I'll be, be something good. I'll be in Kona, Hawaii. Sorry, well, you can tune in. We'll bring you oh, in. Yes, I'll, I'll come in. I'll, Maybe I'll, we can do it through Zoom. I'm not sitting on an airplane. I'm not sitting on an airplane. I will be. I will tune in. All right. Very good. So thank you all. Have a good evening. We'll uh, we'll see you next Monday.